Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live. It's exciting to see so many people with us this morning already, anxious and ready to listen to our special guest, uh, Jan Wagner. Our topic today is Power of Projects, and our newbie question is, why is collaboration with other classes important? We are unfortunately minus one star today, and that's Kim Case. Kim is not well, and so that you have probably may have already typed in the chat. Please be patient with this. I don't type well at all, and uh, Peggy's a real whiz at doing things. But with one less person, it's a little bit harder. Fortunately, we have Tammy Moore in the chat, who is our uh, closed captioning volunteer, and she often uh, fills in as well. So we're looking forward to everyone sharing their ideas and resources as we pass along today in this really exciting show. I know we have a few people who are new to Illuminate today, so I wanted to do briefly tell you um, what kinds of things you look for in participating. First off, we'll have some poll questions. There's a green check and a red X if you wouldn't mind clicking on those. You can check to make sure that you know how that works. So at the bottom of the participants window, green check or red X, and we're all ready to go. Good. Some of you not finding it, green check or red X. Give it a shot. Click it on, click it off. Emoticons are over here. If you're happy, applause, got something, uh, a great smiley, then you can go ahead and click on that. We do have some, I think, opportunity for open mic time, and that's this little hand green arrow to let us know you'd like to come to the mic. But please, if you have a, uh, a microphone, it needs to be a USB. Otherwise, we can get feedback from uh, the uh, Exchange between the presenter and you asking the questions. If you don't have a, a microphone, you can still raise your hand and we'll type the question in the chat, and we'll try and get to you as soon as possible. Many of you are already finding that if you type in this field in, in the chat window and click Send, your messages appear in the chat window. Just take notice. If your um, text is blue, that means you're sending it specifically to the moderators, a specific, specific individual. If you want everyone to see it, to make sure it says this room. When you're going to take that mic, it's an on switch. It becomes yellow when you're talking. Please, when you're finished, uh, turn it off. Remember, though, that the moderators have all power and that uh, we can shut you off if we need to. Um, and we see all the messages. So just keep that in mind as we go through the show. You're also going to be using the whiteboard in a minute. And we're going to ask you, see, there's two A's. Take the A on the left to type with, and you'll, your uh, uh, text and your content will then appear on the whiteboard. We have a lot of fun here in a minute with our world map. And there's a, green, a blue wand with the starburst in the end. And I'm going to be asking you to use that as well. So that's a quick overview. But I just wanted to mention to anyone who's new that you can change where the chat window is. Right now, it's underneath the participants window. So if you go to view in your menu bar and layouts and wide layout, you can put the chat in the middle because it goes by quite quickly. And uh, it's much easier to see it that way. We are going to do a bit of app sharing today. So there's another uh, selection that you might, might want to make sure that you've got set up. So this is now, instead of view, it's tools, application sharing, and then scale to fit. And you'll find you have a better uh, experience during the presentation. If you haven't been with us before, and I know many of the people here in the, in the room know that we do have a website, live.classroom20. And if you miss any of the links in the, in the chat or any of the conversation, we do post it on our websites in the archives and resources page. So we also publish the link to the Illuminate session. So if anybody couldn't be here, please send the link on to them or bring us to our website. We also have the chat log. We have a, a MP3 file in an MP4 uh, of the presentation as well. And hello to my dog if anybody's here in your park. Um, so it's a great place to catch up on things and, and obviously uh, send your uh, friends and colleagues to uh, share in the resources. Because again, we put all the links that are going on in the chat plus some support links for the show. Uh, Peggy, can you pop in the link for live binders for me now, please? I'll just wait for Peggy to do that. So this is a compilation of all the websites that uh, Jen is using today. If you want it to open it, bookmark it. You can follow along with the, uh, the different websites that she's going to as the resource she's going to use. Just a reminder, though, if you're in Firefox 4, uh, if there's PDFs and they can't be in the um, 
the Live Binder, they will download automatically. So it might take you by surprise. So that's in Firefox 4. Um, and you can't view the page unless they have Internet Explorer 8, Safari, or Chrome. Otherwise, uh, Live Binders is absolutely fantastic resource to use. OK, we're going to get you busy with using the world map. So I'll give you white word privileges. I'm going to ask you to go here to the blue one and the star on the end and plant your little star where you are located in the world. We have someone in Great Britain, I think. I know Virginia is in Italy. Um, we have India, Thailand, Australia. Hello, Ian. Nice to see you here again. Um, I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario in Canada. And Peggy is in Phoenix, Arizona, so that's where we're located. And Jen, it's terrible. Jen and I know each other well from being on the internet. I don't know where she lives, but she's going to tell us in a few minutes where exactly she's located. So sorry, Jen. Isn't it wonderful to see the cross section of people across the world? So yes. Hi, Sebastian. I know you're in India, so terrific. You're in California. Thanks, Jen. So let's move on now to the poll questions. And this time, it's the green check and the red X. The question is, have you ever participated in an online project with Jen Wagner? Just waiting for everybody to cast their vote. All right, let's take a look at the results. OK, well, they're going to be really happy to see you, Jen. Only very few people have participated with you in a project. And I know that they're going to look forward to taking advantage of that opportunity of working with you. Let's go to the next poll question. Have you or your students participated in the Guess the World project? So I'm just going to clear the votes. and. Uh, Everyone give me a, a green check or a red X. Have you, have you or your students participated in the Guess the Wordle project? Just waiting for people right at the bottom of the participants window. A green check if you have, a red X if you don't. Don't feel shy if you haven't, because I know that I've checked mine. I have not participated in this project. So I know you're going to really appreciate getting the background from Jen. I'm pretty sure we know the results again, Jen. Not many people have. Most of us have not participated. Let's go to our third poll question. My third poll question, if you had one book, or uh, let me say, excuse me, I'm on, we're in the middle of a, a webcast. I'm sorry, Irene, I can't. I apologize. Family is here. Um, let's get back to the poll question. Because I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to give you whiteboard tools again. If you had one book or one idea in your classroom that your students would love to share with other students, what book or idea would that be? We're going to ask you to use the text tool. There it is. Let's just remind you where it is. This is the text tool here, not this one here in the little square. That one there, we're going to ask you, again, if you had one book or one idea in your classroom that your students would love to share with other students, what book or idea would that be? So here's your whiteboard. And you have your whiteboard tools. Let's have fun. And if you can't make your comment appear in the whiteboard, go ahead and, and drop it into the chat. Hunger Games, Animoto, Skype Across America, Freak the Mighty, Where the Sidewalk Ends. And people who are not using the text tool are making it a little hard to, to see um, how to share ideas. But great, we're taking up all that whiteboard space. I'm trying to move you around. We will keep the whiteboard. You can see that in the recording. Video conferencing with our students, Sweet Search, Google Trex. 
designing storm chaser vehicles. Some great ideas. Thank you, everyone. So now it's my pleasure to start the introductions for Jen, and uh, we'll begin the show in a minute. Our topic is Power of Projects, and our special guest is uh, Jen Wagner. You know, Jen and I have known each other from a tech talk, and we've never really had a chance to cross paths. So um, I just want to share some of her background that I've read, and I know that uh, Jen can share with us more when she uh, starts her presentation. But, you know, Jen was looking for an interesting way to collect data in 1999 for a science fair project and posted her question to the EdTech News Group Board and the ORA, excuse me, OREO online program was born. The project is now in its 11th year and Projects by Jen hosts many online projects each year and she's been a top finalist in the Global School Net Foundation Teacher Award 2002, 3, 4, and 5 for her online projects and effective use in teacher collaboration, she calls it telecollaboration, and she was awarded the top prize in the Global School Net Foundation Teacher Teacher Award in 2006. Jennifer Hall has also been reckoned by ISTE, Kidspirations, SIGTEL, Tech Museum, and Time Warner for her innovative uses with technology. She has a monthly newsletter that I know she's going to share with you with great links, software reviews, and a 30-minute technology tip for teachers session. Um, she graduated from Pacific Christian College in 1992, and though self-taught in many so software programs, Jennifer continues to take next technology course that she has time for. Jennifer was a tutor on AOL for several years. Act Ch Ch Jen was her uh, username in the homework help area. She taught online and LVS in all office programs. And one of her favorite activities is traveling the US providing enthusiastic seminars and leaving teachers excited with the ideas about how to use online opportunities immediately in the classroom. So she's in California. Maybe they'll tell me the exact city, Jen. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Um, you're going to take over the mic, and I said before, the newbie question is, why is collaboration with other classes important to help you frame your presentation today? So it's been a, a good time on EdTech Top, and we're really nice to see, here and see you here today on Classroom Tuesday Live. So welcome, Jen. Well, thank you. That, that, was, that was quite fun <laughs> to, to hear myself talk about. But um, the thing that I really enjoyed the most was when you all just answered the question in regards to ideas of, um, and books that your kids and your students could share out because you just gave me some ideas and I was um, writing them down as quickly as I could and we'll come back and talk, to the, talk about those in just a bit. But I wanted to drop a quick link into the chat room and I'm going to ask you if you could to quickly go to that link. Uh, we're going to have a mini online project while we're um, here together sharing for the next uh, about 40 minutes. And uh, if you can go to that link and answer the questions um, very quickly. Um, there's only, I think, five or six questions. And then rush back here as quickly as you can. Um, I'll show you how easy it is to, to gather information and, and host a project. Um, in less than an hour. <laughs> anyway, um, Lorna, thank you so much for that introduction. I am so glad to be here with you. And um, it was humbling yet nice to see all the um, X's of people who haven't been in my projects or haven't gone to guess the Wordle yet because that means that this is a new audience. And um, sometimes it gets uh, old when we keep talking to the same people about the same things all the time. So I am so appreciative that you're here today and that I get to share a little piece of my world in EdTech with you. So thank you so much for um, being here with me. And um, we're going to move through the project. And we're going to be going to a lot of sites and I will be app sharing and I'll warn you before we go there. And uh, I'm just going to warn you in advance that if you hear a um, cat, that's going to be Mac who is um, honestly thinks that he's part of my Illuminate life. So if you hear him, um, you'll know that that's my kitty cat, Mac. Anyway, we're going to be talking about the power of projects today more than just online projects because uh, for me, I have met some very 
influential, powerful, wonderful, helpful, um, inspiring people by hosting projects. Many of them who are in the room with me right now that I owe a, a debt of gratitude to for their inspiration and for their encouragement. So we're not just going to be talking about projects that you can join, but also how powerful that they can be. Uh, this is me. If you need to get a hold of me, um, my Skype is genw0424, um, and my email is um, projectsbygen at gmail.com, and my website is projectsbygen.com. And um, thank you for the little um, shout out. I just became a den guru this week, and I have no idea really what that means yet, except I will be hosting some projects through the den network soon as well. And I love Wordles. I absolutely adore Wordles. And so those are the two links if you want to go to later to my um, website, projectsbygen.com, and then projectsbygen.com slash capital G, capital T, capital W. And for those of you who don't know what Guess the Wordle is, um, my friend Jane Lowe and I two years ago were talking about Wordles. And honestly, it happened in like half an hour. We go, well, wouldn't it be fun to do a a wordle uh, maybe once a week, um, that and then students have to guess what it was, and it went from three times a week to um, Monday through Friday now, and it was going to be a one-year project, and we're coming up on the second year of Guess the Wordle, and basically every day Monday through Friday, uh, Wordle goes up with um, a bunch of hints and um, ideas. Um, Monday's easy. Tuesday is um, a time. Uh, in history, Wednesdays are a little bit harder. Thursdays is a song, poem, or book, and Fridays is a famous location. And if you hover over the answer, hover over the wordle, you can see the answer. And uh, next year, I'm going to try to figure out a way that I can make it much more collaborative so students can post their wordles as well. And so it won't be me creating them; it will become student and teacher driven. I hope. I really enjoy it, and um, we've had almost 70,000 people hit it uh, since we started, which I think is pretty cool. So you're welcome to visit that. Um, and if you ever want to give me ideas of how we can make this more collaborative, I would love to hear them. Is it a good project? Um, I'm just running <laughs> out of ideas of wordles to make. Anyway, um, the whys of an online project. If you could go over and with your um, green check mark or your red X, if you've ever been involved in an online project, and I'm not going to make, say online project has to be something that like you um, had to do something in regards to like a week long, even if it was just a Skype call or if it was email or um, you watched a conference or this right now. This is basically an online project. But if you've ever done anything like that within your class, um, just put a check mark up real quick. And Lorna and Peggy, I think that you know how to clear those check marks, so I'll let you do that for me. Um, and then secondly, if you are elementary age, can you put up a happy face? And if you're older than elementary, can you put a green check mark for me? Okay. The projects that I host are specifically for preschool through sixth grade, but that does not mean that they're limited to preschool through sixth grade. They are easily adaptable for the older grades. Um, in fact, one of my high school um, one of my schools that do um, projects with me, they did do the Oreo project, actually the O.R.E.O project. And they did it with their kindergarten class, and the ninth graders were assisting. And the ninth graders had so much fun that they went back to the teacher and told the teacher that they wanted to do that them themselves. And the um, the O.R.E.O project basically is stacking Oreos if you want to some simplify it down to the lowest terms, but it also is teaching averaging and it's teaching estimation and it's teaching um, co um, working with each other and telling for the little students, the younger students. It's just very fun and we uh, <laughs> we've even added a guest the Oreo where people all around the world go with this um, cutout of an Oreo cookie and then we have to guess where they are. And it's just become great fun. So if you want to join us in that project this year, it's always the last two weeks of September and the first week of October. 
Um, but why projects? I don't need to read that for you. You understand. There's just so many things that an online project can bring into your classroom. But the one thing that it doesn't bring into your classroom is it never needs to be something additional. It's not like, oh no, and now we have to add one more thing to our day. If an online project is, is written correctly and is written well, you're going to be able to meld it right into what you're already doing. Uh, for instance, um, you already are teaching your elementary students counting by fives, counting by tens, um, multiplying, um, graphing, things like that. All my projects really have a high basis in math. So they're easily woven into your already created curriculum. And we also bring the standards in. So you don't have to argue with your administration. We hope you don't have to argue with your administration proving why it, you can add this to your um, lesson plan. Because if they're written right, they just weave in so easily that you don't have to um, add one more thing to your already busy day. Um, and um, if you've ever hosted a project with me, I know that you would, would um, back me up. And no, Janet, I didn't know that the Oreo is 100 years in 2012. So we are going to have, not this year, but next year, we are going to have fun with that. We will have to have a celebration of the, the Oreo cookie. And that will be our 14th year of the project. So that will be fun. Anyway, um, I like to say that my um, projects are puddle projects um, because they're not deep. <laughs> and I don't mean that in any other way but just to say they're simplistic and they're a very easy way for teachers who are timid or just ready to start having an online opportunity with their classrooms. It's a very easy way for them to get their feet wet. But also, puddles can be deep. And I do make my projects with different levels to them. So if you want to keep them simplistic and easy and you just want to stay at the bottom level, you can do that. But if you want to add on um, extensions or other activities or take it to a higher level, those opportunities are written into the projects as well. So um, it can be as deep as you wish it to be or it can just be getting your toes wet. Um, that's what I like about my projects. And it's been fun to see Paula, Paula, someone in the chat room with us right now, who is someone that um, was with me in projects a while ago. And now she's hosting her projects. And she's hosting her projects at a different level that I very much admire because um, I'm, I don't mind being the person that's there for the first step and then handing them off to someone like Paula who is ready to take them even farther. Um, it's exciting to see all the projects um, just that are hopping up all over the Internet of people that are being brave now and, and taking that step and doing um, projects. Um, Peggy already showed my archive page, so I'm going to bounce over that. Um, this number um, is Steve Dembo's fault. Steve Dembo is um, a very respected leader of discovery education. And he posted a number this week about how many people the discovery educators has um, influenced um, in the last six years. And so I started wondering, well, let me do a number count on my projects. And this is the number that I came up with. It's a guess, uh, not a guesstimation, but it's not absolute because some projects I put um, classroom numbers, not participant numbers. But um, since 1999, that is how many students I can say for sure have participated in an online project. But I don't want to linger on that because my projects aren't hosted for the numbers it brings out, but it's for the students that it touches. And these are three things I wanted to, to show you um, very quickly or just talk to you about. The little girl at the top. She is. Um, she at the time was living in Louisiana, and this is um, a project that we had hosted called Shoeless and Bark. And basically it went through the um, the two years of the Lewis and Clark expedition. And boxes traveled from school to school with artifacts, um, with books, with worksheets, and with a beanie, um, two beanie babies, one a cat and one a dog that were called Shoeless and Bark. 
and they helped students learn about the Lewis and Clark expedition. Um, very easy project um, to integrate into your curriculum. It was one of my most thorough projects, which I learned the most from because I was developing a curriculum for Lewis and Clark. And this little girl was in my friend Effie's class. And um, not a participant, more shy, laid back, did not get involved that much. The kind of student that you know is learning but not participating. And I know that you all have had those kind of students. You're not really worried about them. Um, you want them to get more involved, but you also know that, um, that they are learning. But she wasn't really involved in the project. Well, then it came time later on that they got to dress up one day and bring in, um, yes, Discovery Education Network. Um, they, uh, they got to dress up as their favorite character, and this little, student, this little girl who was very quiet and very um, shy came dressed as Sagajawea and spoke about everything that she had learned based on that project. And that story just always touches me because that was a student that was affected in a positive way by a project that um, I was sharing with teachers and her teacher had jumped in and said, I want to be a part of this. The little boy underneath, um, another one of my favorite stories, I was walking by the, uh, the um, television one day and they said on CBS News that a mother mallard duck had laid her eggs in front of the Treasury Department in Washington, D.C. And I do not have a very big apartment, so from hearing to the television to brushing my teeth, which is where I was heading to go, the D.C. Ducks project was hatched, literally. <laughs> because I started thinking about um, Make Way for Ducklings and the mallard duck. And for 13 days, we kept our eyes on this mallard duck who was laying her eggs at the Treasury Department. We had a person that I would call every day to get um, information. This was before RSS was really popular. So I was just every day searching for news articles. And um, one of the students who was participating in the project convinced his mom and dad to drive him to Washington, D.C. It wasn't just like get in the car, we're 20 minutes away, drive, to have his picture taken. And if you can see behind him, between him and the, the white fence is where the Mellor deck was. And he became our on-site reporter, uh, probably one of the only people within the project that was able to literally see um, the the ducks and it was so cool and um, that was another exciting thing that had happened because of one of these projects. And then Peggy, if you could, the link that's underneath the little boy that's sitting there with his hands up. Oh, I can, can I do that or should you do that? Let me, I'm going to try to app share. Um, this will be fun to see if I can do this. So hang on just a moment. Uh, I'm going to jump in, Jen. Did you want them to see the movie? The web yes, I like it. That's no problem at all. But don't use app sharing. Use that link in web tour, and then it will. Uh, they can click on play, and they'll be able to hear it. Okay. So, so remind me how to get to web tour. Click on the globe up at the top. And Is it next to the? Okay, up across the top, it says start a web tour, and then just oh. drop, <laughs> drop and paste your URL right there. Do you want me to do it? Okay. Could you? I sure can. And, 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 and I will do. I will give a little bit of background while you're doing that. Perfect. I'll bring it up for um, you. The o.r.e.o project, which is our really exciting online project, started in 1999 as just a little um, collection, how do you eat an Oreo cookie, uh, with about 150 classes. And it has grown like you would not believe. Well, I hope we can see this video in just a moment. Um, Peggy has put up the web tour. Peggy, do you click on the play button, or do they? Everyone will click on it, them, on it themselves. OK, so right now you should see a video of a little, um, I think it is. I'm not sure if this is a girl or a boy, sorry. Um, just click on the little arrow underneath and watch this video for me. And then when you're done, can you give a check mark so I know that you're back? A green check mark. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, um, I see some green check marks and um, I know that some of you, I also sometimes have difficulty with videos um, in Illuminate with my computer, so hopefully you got to see it. Um, there's a lot of things that I could talk about in regards to this video, but I guess the one that really is what I wanted to focus on was the different expressions that you saw within these children. And especially at the end, the absolute just joy that that last student had, but also the surprise of the the um, cookie falling down, it, it's so silly. And I know you can simplify this down to, oh, they're just stacking Oreos. And someone brought up dexterity, which, which is also a, um, something to bring into this as well, because there's so many things that can be learned from this. But it was just fun to see children having fun. And if you noticed in this video, and you can go back and watch it later, this is how the project is supposed to work because class was still going on all around the classroom. They still had different activities that they were working on. Um, everyone was focused on this one area. They were able to go on with the other things that they were doing. And you notice that students had different ways that they were stacking the Oreos. And this teacher was able to capture that. We had one student at my school that um, it was really interesting because she was um, she was the student that the teacher, I'm trying to think of how to say this, um, she, was not, she was not someone to sit in her seat. She was not someone who was the typical student who um, just sat there and, and was, was not noticed. She, um, she was all over the place. She was busy, 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 busy. Um, and then it came the day for her to do the Oreo cookies. And all the other students had been stacking. And this was a first grade class. And, and everyone stacked like 8 to 10, 8 to 12, 8 to 15 maybe, and very precisely. And she sat down. And she stacked 32 without a, she didn't even stop. She just went boom, 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 boom. And I just looked and I was like, oh my gosh. And the teacher too, and we were like, OK. Um, I'm not going to go into all the things that we talked about later, but suddenly it was, and, and I'm probably rambling right now, but it was like, oh my gosh, what are we not noticing here? Her, her skill at doing this, it was like, um, I know I'm rambling and I know that I'm not going to be able to, to say exactly what I was feeling and, and what we noticed, but I, something opened that day and by stacking Oreos, we saw a part of a child that we hadn't seen before. Um, and I'm going to end on that note, but it just amazed me that, um, and it was from stacking Oreos, and I know that sounds sim simplistic, but <laughs> it was just, it opened our eyes to something new. Um, but your class is an important piece of this puzzle because um, Paula can agree with me, and I know Janet in the room, and Jan, uh, other people that are in the room that are participated in, in projects. Your class does become a piece of that puzzle because you're integrating your class's information. If you participate in the project that I hosted at the beginning, and we can drop that link again, where, thank you, that's the word I was looking for, the multiple <laughs> intelligences. Um, I'm just collecting data of how you're sitting right now. Um, and hopefully before the end we'll be able to go see that data. But I'm also, it's also going to become a geography lesson and it's going to also become, um, it could become a time 
um, project. It could become why are they sitting where they're sitting because of it. Projects open up questions. Um, my friend Chad Lehman does a Skype across the USA project where students become the experts of their states and they share with another student and other classrooms. Someone dropped into the chat room at the very beginning of the room when we went um, the session when we went to the whiteboard and I said, "What idea or good book would you want to share?" And someone said, "Animoto." And a light bulb went off with our students could be the teachers to other students on so many issues in regards to video pro um, um, online softwares or offline softwares or math or English. Our students can become the experts for other students in a variety of topics. And that's what I really like about Skype Across America because it's not the teachers sharing the information about their state. It's students sharing information about their state to other students. And um, I'll be showing you the um, link to Chad's in just a moment. But, but to become a part of that that um, puzzle, it's like if you've ever put a jigsaw puzzle together, um, as you're putting the pieces together, you're not really noticing the pieces that are still missing as you're working on theirs until one is not there and suddenly it becomes the piece that you need to find. Well, that's what like projects are. We may not miss a school from North Dakota being in the project until that class joins and suddenly it's like, we didn't know we were missing this. This is so great. Thank you for becoming a part of this project. And your class needs to join in a project because they need to be a part of putting the entire puzzle together. And they're talking about the stacking of, teach of, of principal stacking Oreos. I have to tell you, that is one of the most fun things is when the principal comes in and stacks the Oreos. At our school, our principal comes in and is like the person who shows the students how to do this project. And she has never stacked more than 15 Oreos. So it's fun because our first graders are always stacking more than her from the very get-go. And she doesn't do that on purpose. Um, but it's fun for the students to compete against each other and compete with the principal. But the nice thing about the Oreo project is that you do not submit your highest score. You submit in the average for the class. So everyone's participating to get a final outcome. These are different um, softwares online that you can use in regards to participating in an online project. And we're going to be going to some of them in just a few moments. Um, Glogster, I wanted to explain, is not collaborative, but it is something that students can share with each other. So for instance, let's say that you wanted to do a wrinkle in time, which someone just mentioned um, not too long ago about a project. You could have several classrooms involved in it and each one took either a chapter of the book or they could take in a character of the book. For instance, um, my school might do Mrs. Who and Paula's school might do Mrs. What's It and um, Janet's school might do Mrs. Which and um, someone else might do Charles Wallace and someone else might do Meg and someone else might do um, It. And they put together each page of the book within a Glogster, and a Glogster is an online poster. And that's how this um, software could become collaborative because you're sharing a book together um, by building um, a poster. VoiceThread, if there's nothing else that you use in your classroom, and I honestly don't care if you're kindergarten all the way up into um, your PhD. VoiceThread is the most easiest online software to use and one of the easiest in regards to collaboration because it only is three steps. You name it, you upload your pictures, and you invite people to comment. It's that simplistic. And the nice thing about it now is that you can type in your comments, you can microphone in your comments, you can video in your comments, and you can also call in your comments. Yes, Skype across, um, I don't know about Skype across the ages, so someone will have to tell me about that later. I know about Skype across America. 
please drop in all your project ideas at the same time because I am <laughs> I'm very much involved in online projects, but I do not have a list of every single online project that's available out there. In regards to VoiceThread, I personally have always gone the freeway still. Um, I started with um, VoiceThread before they were the EDU version, and so they grandfathered me in. Um, I am very happy not um, paying for it, um, but I do not have students. So if you do go to the account that lets you have students involved, it does give you individual logons for the students. Personally, how I use VoiceThread right now is um, the teachers who want to be a part of my VoiceThreads, I share with them my logon and my password, and I've never had any problems with it. The one issue that I do have with that then is that everyone who comments shares it with the same logo. Um, so there are pros and cons about VoiceThread. But VoiceThread, if you have not used VoiceThread, I encourage you to use it very much so because it's a very, very easy software. Um, Skype. We have to um, be cautious with Skype right now because it just was purchased, and we're not sure exactly where it, it, it's, um, its life is going to be in the next few years. It is a very, very powerful um, way to invite people into your classrooms, though, and there is the Skype um, for Schools website now that in and you can go in and log on, and um, it is like a. <laughs> um, I don't want to call it a dating service, but it kind of sort of is because you go in and you type in who you are and what your school is and who you're looking for to connect with, and then other schools can contact you. And I've been contacted several um, times already through that. Um, I mentioned Wiki Spaces. Personally, I use PB Works, but Wikis are very, very um, effective uses for online projects. Um, cell phones. Um, we're still not there totally with schools being receptive to them. Um, schools were um, a little bit reluctant for calculators, if you remember a few years ago, and now they're a given. So it will be interesting to see how, how we talk about remember when with cell phones in the next um, five to ten years. And then thank you for, for dropping the Skype link. And then um, Google. Um, and Gmail and Google Forms has literally changed um, with ease how I, I handle projects. I use Google Forms every single day, um, and we'll go to that in just a moment so I can show you how we were able to collect that information. In fact, let me go right now. Let's see if we can do this. I'm going to try app sharing. So I'm going to, you're going to see in just a moment, hopefully. Okay. This is the, um, I lost my chat window, so interrupt me at any time if um, there's something. Oh, there it is. Okay. This is the form that you just filled out. Okay. And I'm going to go here. And this is the Excel document of the data that's been collected. Uh, when we started today, that was, was at 127. So that lets you know where the number is right now. And I'm going to go to show the summary of responses. And here, you'll see right away by using the Google Form, here is a graph of how people are sitting at this time. And then also in what grade levels you are. And then um, let me go to another one though. So I'm going to close app sharing just for a moment because I need to get back to the page I want to show you. Hang on just a moment. Sorry. Here we go. Okay. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> You'll notice right here, though, that I have in the second column, the B column, I have collected your um, zip codes. 
I'm going to go to a software called mapalist.com and take you along with me. And I'm going to log in over here. And what this software does is it works with the um, Google Doc to map where people are from. So I'm going to say, oh, I can just go to Manage because it's already done. And I'm going to look for How's Your Seat, which is right here. And I'm going to update that. So I haven't updated it since we had 31 pins. So now our pins are going to, sorry, it needs to be this one. Sorry, we were at 137 and now we're going to be higher. It will take just a moment to upload it, update it. Okay, and I'm going to go to View and change it to the uh, How's Your Seat. And now here is a map of participants of this project. Just because we used the data that was collected in the Google form by postal code. Um, and I have directions on how to do this. And my friend Dennis has also written directions on how to do this. So this project that basically was like, OK, what are you sitting on, has now become um, a geography lesson as well. You can also take this via these buttons down here into a KMZ, which means you can take it right into Google Earth. And now you can start doing measurements of distances from one place to another, to another, to another, to another. Um, yes, and um, that's interesting in regards to how many is on the East Coast. Because um, just a little side note for a moment, I, I have I'm still missing this part of the United States. Um, the East Coast ha has embraced my projects. The West Coast has as well. But I'm still um, meeting um, the Midwest. I, I guess the um, Montanas, the Dakotas, we're, we're filling them up. Um, but yes, we're in Idaho. In fact, Idaho was one of my last states to ever get. It was such a. It was touching to me when um, the. Um, the O.R.E.O project um, in 2010 was the first project to hit all 50 states. So for me, that was a highlight. Okay, um, let's go over here and let's. Oops, sorry, I'm going to unshare apps again just for a moment. You have to understand with me, I'm having a blast <laughs> to this little clicking on the apps and going back and forth because that was quite fun. Okay, so I'm going to run through these because I'm looking at the clock and I know that we want to have time for, an for question and answers. I'm just going to highlight really quick on one of these projects. So I'm going to go back to the app sharing and I'm going to take you to, um, if there was one project, oops, hang on just a second. If there was one project, that um, and it's not even one of my projects. <laughs> if there was one project that I would encourage you to try this week in your classroom with your students, um, I would suggest that you check out the Monster Exchange project. What this project does is, and it could be even something that you assign for homework, for extra work, for, or invite your parents to be a part of. Um, or you just do it and then your, your students um, follow your directions. Um, and it doesn't even have to be monsters. What you do is you have your students draw something and then they have to give directions on what they drew. And then they give those directions to someone else who follows those directions and draws whatever they're supposed to draw. And then they compare the two. I know that sounds simplistic, but it becomes very powerful because it's descriptive writing and it's um, compare and contrast. And it's what did I miss that I should have explained better, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
and the power that this project can unleash to make your students um, be better writers, to make your students much more descriptive, which we often have a hard time doing because um, it's so easy to use the same words all the time. In fact, I've used the word simplistic way too many times today. I need to find another way to explain that. So let me show you one that we did just um, a week ago at a conference that I was teaching at where um, summer project, where basically we took the um, oop, wrong project, sorry, but that's a quick note I can tell you about this project really quick. Um, look what I did as a project I'm hosting this summer. If you want to know more about it later, just go to jlwagner.pbworks.com or drop me a note at projectsbyjen um, at gmail.com and I'll tell you more about it. This is this is my quick project that we did based on the Monster Exchange that I um, wrote a description about a bouquet that it had three flowers. That, um, their green stems are tied with a purple bow and the bow has a blue border. The first flower was purple with the blue center, the second, and you can read the directions. And then they were um, asked to upload their pictures to um, Flickr or just send them to me. And for people that were in that session, we took pictures um, with my cell phone and just uploaded them right away to Flickr. And then while we were waiting for people to draw their pictures, there were different activities that the students could go to. And when we were done drawing pictures, we went to this interactive Venn diagram. Um, if you haven't used this before, we just found this. And this allows you to put students next to each other. And um, I'm going to use Peggy just as a quick example. And um, for instance, we know that Peggy lives in Arizona. And we know that Jennifer lives in California. And I'm typing incorrectly right now. But, um, and we both like to talk. And so, <laughs> OK, there we go. And um, you can have your students work on this interactive Venn diagram together. I'll give you the link for that right here. And um, there's the link to the Venn diagram. But um, what this became is, here are the pictures of their drawings. Now, this was the original. And these were all their interpretations. Very easy to do. Um, a quick project that, um, that you can get, just give directions to one student or all your students. But the exciting thing about this is that it doesn't just have to be um, Colors, crayons. There's avatar makers now online. There's the make yourself make a wild self. There's uh, make yourself an M and M. There's make yourself a we. There's make yourself so many things that your students can go to an online website, create whatever they want it to be, then write down a description of what that is and give it to someone else, and they go to that same website and create it. Um, and then you talk about what they learned and how they learned. And there's so much that can be tied into this. Um, but basically, the main idea was the monster exchange that has woven out into different ideas. And I know that Paul and I have been talking about this in regards to um, gingerbread and snowmen and um, possibilities for a Christmas project so that our students are collaborating more with each other and sharing ideas. I'm going to turn off the app share for just a moment and go back to the slides. Um, another good site is to make sure you check out, and all of these are in the um, uh, Live Binders link that um, Peggy will put back in the chat for you. So if you um, don't have this presentation, you can go to it. Be sure that you check out globalschoolnet.com because 
globalschoolnet.org because they have um, projects for all grade levels. Cyberbee down here, excellent website. If you have fourth graders, you need to check out their Western Ho project, a very, very good project. Um, ePals has projects all the time um, that are still um, looking for people all the time through the school year. Rock, Rock Our World, which is hosted by um, Carol Ann McGuire, is just getting ready to host a new project. You want to make sure you check hers out. The Flat Stanley Project is a very, very good project. Um, Life Round here um, will be starting up again. It's a, a fun project that your students get to share about where they live. And the Tooth Tally Project. If you're a first grade teacher, you are already doing this. So why not extend it that you're sharing and gathering information from all around the world in regards to um, things that are going on in your classroom? Because at the very beginning of this session, you were asked what ideas, what books would you want to share? You already have the foundation for an online project. Now you just need to find people that you want to share ideas with. And it's not something like, I'm going to go back to App Shares real quick. It's not that you need to do something like this, that you put together, here's the DC Dex project. It's not something like this, that you have to put together a whole website that has graphics and everything with it um, to create a project. It might be as simplistic as just making a um, Google form or inviting people to upload things to Flickr. Or let's go to VoiceThread really quick. My caps lock is on, which is becoming quite fun. Okay. And um, with VoiceThread, um, you would want to go to the EDU link. I did not go to the EDU link, but I'm, I'm not too worried about what we're going to see here. But these just become very easy ways to share data back and forth. Uh, I love VoiceThread, and if you haven't checked it out, please, please, please check it out. Let's go back to turning off the app share and there's all the links that you're going to get, and we're almost on the money. And I know, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Peggy, for dropping in that link. This Mary had a little lamb. The teacher that did it had the students make voice threads of where the lamb went instead of school one day. Very, very clever project. And the nice thing about the voice thread is you can invite people from all over to share about the project. And so grandparents and friends and things were commenting on where the lambs went. And it became a, it became a, a powerful use of voice thread in the, the teacher's classroom. I wanted to share one more voice thread with you. Um, I don't have the link, but I'll drop the link in when I can get it. Um, my friend Dennis, who is a DEN um, member as well, and he just lives down the freeway from me a little bit. His teacher, one of the teachers at his school, decided to put together a Olympic voice thread where his students became the TV reporters for the different events. And the teacher was just content having it within her own classroom. But Dennis, because he's a member of Discovery Educators, mentioned it to some other Discovery Educator teachers who then said, well, we want to be a part of it too. And so suddenly these t students were getting responses from all around the world to their voice thread. That is not always life changing, but that is memorable. That student will remember, like today, um, I love the fact that we have people all around from North America here today. Um, that there's someone from Italy just like makes my makes me just smile a little bit bigger. That there's someone from Australia, that there's someone from all over the world. It's just like it becomes a, it just a little bit more special. Not better, not anything else, but just like, oh my gosh, someone from Australia is here. That means uh, I don't even know what time it is in Australia right now, but I'm sure I'll be told in just a moment. But your students are going to remember things like that as well. Um, and I know that you guys can't see the private messages that are going on right now, but I have teachers that are already getting <laughs> 
reverberating in the uh, in the chat room, which is exciting to see. I haven't been able to watch the chat, and I know that there's questions, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to answer them. And I know that we're running out of time, um, but Peggy and Lorna asked if I could stay later, and I'm willing to stay later if you want me to. And um, I heard someone. <laughs> Cough in the background. So I'm going to turn off my mic just for a moment and let you give you back the time, and then um, let me know when we have questions. Wonderful, thanks, Jen. It's been a wonderful presentation. Everybody's telling you that in the chat room. I would like to officially close out the show with the next few slides, just to let people know what's coming up this week on Conversations.net, Future of Education, Learn Central. Upcoming interviews Monday, May 24th, Tuesday. Uh, we have Steve Denny on Radical Management and Education on Wednesday. We have Sir Ken Robinson on Out of Our Minds, Learning to be Creative. Uh, Tuesday, May 31st, James Bosco on Participatory Learning, Just the Latest Buzzword. On into June uh, the 1st, on Wednesday, we have Kate Frickus, Monica Hardy, Lisa Nielsen, and Clark Aldridge, a panel discussion on unschooling. And on to the 2nd of June, we have How to Be a High School Superstar and Hack Your Education series with Cal Newport. Our shows uh, will not have a show next week because of Memorial Day, and we're just still uh, finally up our uh, uh, preparations for the 4th and 11th, but looking forward to Megan Wilson, I author and I book on the 18th of June. And we're going into ISTE 2011, edublogger.com, so we won't have a show that day, the 25th. And that's the day my son's getting married, so I won't be with you. And really exciting day for everybody. So, uh, Peggy, did you want to speak to this? Because you have more background than I do for the uh, Virtual 4T conference. Sure, I'll just make this really quick. But we'd love to share with you anything we learn about that is an exciting opportunity and it's free. We all love free. And starting tomorrow for the next four days, there's an amazing virtual technology conference being hosted by the University of Michigan totally free. All you have to do is register to get access to all of the links for the sessions. Gosh, I think there may be 160 sessions planned. I mean, it's an incredible undertaking. And many of you know Liz Kolb, who is the author of uh, Cell Phones for Learning or tools, <laughs> tools for uh, the classroom. And she is one of the main organizers of this conference. So check it out. Go to that link. I'll, the, I'll, oh, I see that uh, Len has dropped the link in there. And um, I'll drop it again as well. But uh, you're, you won't be disappointed. Lots of great things going on. Thanks, Terry, for filling us in. And then I dropped the link in for you as well. So uh, when you do close uh, your browser window, not walk out the little blue door, you will have a, a, another browser window pop right up with the Classroom to Zero Live survey. If you're looking for a certificate of participation, professional development certificate, you'll be given that option as you complete the survey. And we're always looking for great ideas in that survey about uh, uh, upcoming uh, speakers or presenters that you'd like to suggest to us, as well as giving your feedback on how the show went today. Uh, we do have a, a iTunes U channel, but temporarily it's not out of it's out of uh, service, and we have a new format coming, so you won't be able to access that just now. Uh, here is my opportunity again to send out my special thank you on uh, behalf of um, Peggy, myself, Steve Hargan, on Jennifer being with us today. It's been a phenomenal presentation. I know a few more people are going to ask questions as we go, and we always have to thank thank Steve. Uh, Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 20 Live, the future of education, and everyone today who participated and dropped in more information and projects, uh, again, for Blackboard Collaborate uh, Learn Central for the sponsorship. So with that in mind, we'll go back to about that slide there. And again, if you can't stay, remember that we do have a website, live.classroom20.com, that you can catch up any chat or uh, conversation that we've had in the past few minutes. And if you're, as well, as not losing sight of Jen as we keep on asking her questions. You know, Jen, everybody asked questions and suggested things. I really have one specific one about, um, can you share a middle school project? Um, in any way or shape or form? 
Well, the Life Round Here project is um, a middle school project, and John Oreck, who is um, J O R E C H on Twitter, that's J O R E C H, is doing doing a digital citizenship project with um, middle school um, students right now that you may want to talk with him about. Um, he's on Twitter. You don't have to join Twitter to follow him. If you just um, go to Twitter and type in twitter.com slash J-O-R-E-C-H and then just skim through some of his um, most, most recent tweets, you'll find the link to his um, digital citizenship project, which is pretty cool. Um, also, for middle school and for high school, we, we can't talk about online projects without mentioning the flat classroom projects. Um, and you can um, go to those and check them out as well. I believe that they're winding down for this school year. And then also, um, if you go to, um, hang on just a moment. I I'm going to grab the link for you. Um, there is another website. It's C I E S E is what you would Google. I'll have to find it for you. They have some projects that are very science-based. Um, one of them is called um, a square of land or a square of life. Another is bucket buddies. Um, another one has to do with going to a local pond. They're not as collaborative, but they're very um, um, effective projects to host in your classroom as well. Um, and then ePals. Um, and Global Schoolhouse, both of those if you search them. But if you want to join something like in the next week, um, check out either John Oreck or um, check out um, Life Round Here. Thank you, Peggy, yes. Uh, very, there's very another good. question. Another Go question ahead. earlier as well from Sherry. Will Google video chat work in instead of Skype? I have to tell you I would assume that it has. I have not tried it yet. Um, I know that um, helped me with the Mac. What, is it iChat um, that's in Mac? Oh, my, I'm Jen Wagner on um, J-E-N-W-A-G-N-E-R. iChat works. Um, and I don't know if, if, you, if devices are allowed at your school. Um, I just recently saw this past week where a teacher at my school um, and didn't even expect to do this. It was just so funny. But a, uh, a teacher at my school came running in and said, look, 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 I just got the new iPhone. And I go, oh, do you know so-and-so? And she goes, yeah. I go, well, let's face talk, I think it's called, with them. And they were able to use face talk. Um, and I'm not sure if you can use face talk yet with iPad. And I know I'm rambling right now. But if you get the extra device with your iPad that you can hook it to your projector, I'm telling you, the possibilities of even using, um, and so many people do have iPhones and iPads now. They could be the way that you connect with other teachers as well. Thank you. iPad works for FaceTime. And then you just plug it in and it becomes, it hooks to your monitor hooks to your projector or your monitor. We were at my friend's house this weekend and he goes, um, I want to put my Mac on my TV. Do we don't, you know how to do that? And we had his, I mean, he has like one of those 72 inch televisions and they were showing their pictures. There's possibilities now that we just need to think a little bit like, oh, could I do that? Oh, I can. And uh, then write tutorials of how to do it because the iPhone and the um, iPad are making it much much so easy. That, and I know for a lot of your schools, Skype might be blocked. I don't know. Um, uh, cell phone use, um, I think it's going to change in the next couple of years. I think we're saying no to something that is going to be like calculators was. In five years, we're going to be laughing about how we had said no to something so powerful. I know, Jenna, I dropped it into the chat that uh, the Toronto District School Board here in Ontario was two years adamant, two years ago adamant that we could not use cell phones in the classroom. And, and just this past week, the Board of Trustees changed the policy to permit them. So, yeah, two years progress. You know, once one, I mean, Toronto's one of the biggest boards here in Ontario. Once that starts moving, you know, well, they say it's okay, it'll start to unfold for us here in Ontario. And I know it'll, you know, the same kind of example is just happening, um, like dominoes just falling into place, which is terrific. But, uh, I wonder if you can share one more question here. I know that uh, I know you had to do this, but people were asking for safe uh, Google email for the safe Gmail. Can you just walk them through how to set up uh, a Gmail address for the kids using your identity. 
I have never done that, so oh. I'm not. So if you if you know how to do that, you may want to to. Uh, I don't mind giving you the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, what, Peggy might correct me on here, but I'm pretty sure it's um, Nanine plus your um, user ID with Google email that you can set up aliases for your Gmail account. They all come into your Gmail. They are oh, plus. There she students. goes. Yeah. Well, is there a space teacher plus between? Is is it is there a teacher space plus space student? Okay, there we go. Okay, I, I have not tried that. Yeah, my my classroom right now is called the internet. I do not have a a classroom that I walk into every day and open a door and close a door. Can you use that for Google's Apps account? You know what, Marissa? I would think that you wouldn't have to because Google Apps gives you email accounts, but that would be something to to find out. Yeah, and, and always we have to clarify that. And I'm really glad that Paula brought that up. Um, I don't mind being a Norma Ray, <laughs> but I think we do have to to um, look at our school's policies at times and and decide which are the ones we want to die on the hill for and which are the ones that we might just need to um, just wait back and kick back and, and um, I know that we need school reform, but um, I think we need school respect as well. So it's always very good to check out the end user license agreements and your school policies. And IWB is an interactive whiteboard. Um, Great. Uh, Polly here has the mic and she wants to ask you a question or share something. Go ahead, Polly. You have the mic. Cool. I just wanted to say hi to my buddy Jan, Jen Wagner. Uh, one of these days I'm going to meet you face to face and I can't this wait. Is Paula? This is Paula Nava, yes ma'am. Okay, I love you Paula. And for those of you who are listening to this right now, you need to follow Paula because she is um, she's amazing and what she's doing with her ideas and, and growing project ideas is, is, is very good to watch and we will meet someday. We will. And then we'll sit and just laugh. <laughs> I, I, um, Paula, you're doing mighty things. I'm very, very proud of you. Am I going to ISTE? Oh, Karen, that's you. Hi, Karen. Um, I don't know if I'm going to ISTE. I was, I was sure I was not going, but some events happened this last week, and I'm not exactly sure what how those events are going to affect. Um, Okay, uh, Can I answer that question really quickly with that um, 2662 just asked? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Then, then Ian's got the mic ready to go with you too. Okay, Ian, Ian, just a quick second. How can a classroom with 15 stations be, an integra be integrated with projects? Um, I need to tell you that is exactly the classroom that I had when I was in the classroom. Um, collaboration becomes so simple because um, and I hate using simplistic again, but the kids team up. They work together, two on a computer, three on a computer. And um, I don't know if this is 15 additional, if you're in a classroom that has 15 stations, but you can do it because it become, can become a center instead of just a all-class activity. I don't know what grade level you're talking about, um, but when you use projects as centers, and I know that Paula will back me up on this again. When you turn your classroom into centers the day that you do the project, um, you can do many, many more things. Fifteen stations, one computer. Fifteen stations, one classroom. Um, you can do it. it you, they just have to work together. Or you use them with center, centers. Um, and if anyone else wants to jump in. And, and 26, if you want to email me at projectsbyjen at gmail.com, we can um, we could make a Google Doc and talk to a lot, um, a lot more possibilities of this. We'll invite everybody into it. Okay, Ian, you want to jump in? Thank you, yeah, Peggy, for dropping my email. Yeah, Jen. Uh, just a, a quick uh, question. In the UK, we have a, a newer years uh, network group dealing with uh, very young students from nursery age and upwards. Uh, for the very youngest students, what, what tools or projects would you suggest the teachers try? And the second question was, 
Have you any experience of using iPads or tablets with very early uh, age students? Well, let me tell you first that Cherie Toledo and Rena, and I don't know her last name, but Sherry Toledo, sorry, not Cherie, Sherry Toledo, who is C. Toledo on Twitter, they are doing a research right now. Both of them are doctors on iPad and iPod use in preschool. So, um, Peggy, if you can find uh, Sherry's Twitter and drop it in, you may want to contact them. Um, I also attended a session at um, ICE, the Illinois conference just recently, that they uh, did a session on um, iPads in the kindergarten classroom. So if you want to, uh, we'll add that to live binders. Um, I have a hard time because I am a preschool teacher that was um, where I spent 17 years of my life, and you cannot beat manipulatives, and, and, and I don't want the devices to become the mani manipulative for students because those little ones, they need so many things that are hands-on. Um, but um, there are possibilities of using them, and there I have a friend who has a two-year-old daughter that picked up the iPad and used it like she had been using it forever. And she was showing us how to do things that we didn't even know how to do. So I know that there's something there's something to look at to keep an eye on. Um, for your younger kids, I would the only, the only project that I know that they're going to love, but I'm not sure if you can do it or not, is the Lucky Charms project is such a fun project for the little ones because they're learning to graph and they're sorting out um, the Lucky Charms shapes. And I, I believe you do have Lucky Charms in the UK, but there's an issue, can you use food in the classroom? Um, I would use Skype with them, um, but I would invite others from the outside to come in as well so it's just not someone on the television um, because they're used to watching television as well. I would, um, not to pass the buck, but I would sincerely um, invite you to contact Sherry Toledo and um, become a part of her project of what she's doing with the iPad devices. Did we find her name? I think it's C. Toledo or it might be Sherry Toledo. Um, thank you, Peggy. Um, and that, that's her name if you just want to Google her. But that's, she's doing a, she already has her doctorate, so I guess she's just doing a research paper on that. Yes. Um, and Ian, um, Contact me more because I'm thinking off the cuff. I'm thinking really quickly right now, and probably in about an hour I'm going to say, oh, I should have told him this. <laughs> Is there a way to disable an internet user from logging onto Facebook? Um, I don't know. I'm reading the questions as they go by. Jan, I have to agree, and you know what, um, in regards to centers and jobs, and I don't know if this will work for your school, and I don't know how much time we have, but a few years ago, my school has not embraced my projects. Um, they're starting to, but they're still a little bit laid back, and, and, um, and I see a hand is raised, so let me say this and then I'll answer that question or um, whatever. We did a Salute to Seuss project for Dr. Seuss. And my teachers were reluctant, and they didn't know what, that, what really what it entailed. And I said, well, how about each of you take one part of the project, and the class will revolve um, between teacher to teacher to teacher. One of you do the art part. One of you do the story part. One of you do the um, writing part. And they, they had never, ever done anything like that before. And they enjoy it now. They're like, oh wait, I like teaching that lesson. Let me teach that. And we all know we're better teachers on things that we enjoy teaching. Our kids know what we love teaching and what we don't like teaching. Um, even if you're the best teacher in the world, you have something that you love teaching more than anything else. And centers just makes that work. Because, and so a center might be 15 things in your classroom, or it might be you teaching something and the teacher next door teaching something. Um, Surprise your kids one day and get them out of their seats and get them moving and, and if it works, try it again. If it doesn't work, you learn. It does work with some students. It doesn't with others. But centers, for me, it's the way to do projects. Someone had their hand up. Allison, thank you for smiling. I'm glad that you agree. 
Yeah, I, I think and that was Ian before you. That's yeah, why okay. Ian, so. We, we are <laughs> the, I, I'm reading about she hates the 13 colonies. You know what, though? Assign them to your kids. Um, back Backtrack real quick. I had a teacher on my campus who doesn't like to do PowerPoints. She, she, she's like, I, I don't know how to do them. And so I said, well, give the chapters to the students and let the students become an expert on that chapter. So um, Terry, you may want to do that with your students. Assign a colony to each one of them and have them make a PowerPoint and let them share with the classroom about their colony. Oh, and yes, yeah, songs are always good. That's how I learned the um, Alabama and Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas. That's how I learned my, my state by uh, singing a song. And that's the first <laughs> you won't hear me sing often, but you just got to hear Jennifer Wagner sing. Um, and that's how I learned oh. my Ten Commandments, too. <laughs> anyway. You know what? Absolutely Terry wonderful is ideas. True. Yeah. 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 Terry, though, Terry is right. It's not cheating if they're learning. So, yeah, right. very good, Terry. See, you're, we're growing ideas really quick, and I hope it's Terry. Um, Jen, how are we going to keep this conversation going? There's still people going, and I know people have to leave with the, you know, Saturday and um, sunny here, I don't sunny know. there. Following your Twitter and um, well, we did not talk about the online community. There's the projects by Jen.ning.com. We can um, continue it over there. You're welcome to join that. Um, we, uh, yeah, you did, pay, uh, Paula. Uh, pro thank you. Um, I'm on Twitter, Jen Wagner on Twitter. I'm Jen W0424 on Skype. We'll just have to do this again because this was this was great fun. I know everyone here has enjoyed it as well, and it is great, Jen, to have someone who's right in the classroom sharing ideas to make it make sense for people instead of you know just reading it to hear it. You know, success stories is really uh, uh, heartwarming and encouraging. So, um, again, I want to thank you very much for being with us today. Are there any more questions from people in the chat? Do they have any more questions for Jen? Well, can I? I'm going to leave you with one story just because I can, <laughs> in regards to what Paula is talking about. Um, in reg Paula just mentioned that she met, met Jen Wells through um, something I hosted. Many of you know um, Kim Cafino. And um, she joined one of my projects once. Oh, and now I'm going to start telling the story and forget the other person's name. Um, she teamed up with another teacher of my project. Her name's going to come to me in just a moment. This teacher used to live in Australia. You guys can help me because you're going to know who I'm talking about in just a moment. And she ended up moving to the school, and she and Kim taught together um, at the same school. They had first met through an online project. And, oh, I know who it is, and I can see her face. Um, she has since moved on to another school, but. They became great friends through that. Um, I met Kathy Shields, one of my best friends in the whole world, and Janet Barnstable, um, another person who I respect so much, through online, through their participating in my projects. They are now friends. They're colleagues. They're people that I go visit um, when I um, plan vacations. It's not just for your kids' benefit. It's going to be for your benefit as well because you are going to meet some of the neatest people through online projects that, for instance, um, I just met one more person and I'll, I'll be quiet, Mandy McDonald. She and I are hosting an online project right now where we are collecting books and things for the teachers that were hit by the tornadoes in the southeast just a few weeks ago, but now we're extending it to the teachers that are being hit so hard by the Mississippi River. So um, there are just things that, that projects can become life changing, but not just for your students. They're going to affect you as well. And why can't I think of her name? It just it, Kim Cafino and I'm sorry, Julie Lindsay is going to be stuck in my head, and it's not Julie Lindsay. But um, projects will change your life. And um, on that point, I will say. Thank you so much for letting me be here today. Thank you, Jen. You know, thanks to you. You made the show. And everybody in the chat room makes the show because there's so many resources that have been being tossed uh, back and forth. So yes, hand of applause, everyone, for a great job. Well done. 
you know, Jennifer, you have one of these wonderful voices. I think <laughs> I would recognize you anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I have, okay, um, I have to tell you really quickly because that's really funny that you said that because when I was in Georgia, I was sitting there talking with um, Vicki and Sharon Peters. It was when we were doing um, Women of Web and all of a sudden someone turned and they said, are you Jennifer Wagner? And I said, yeah, I am. And she goes, I heard you laugh and I knew that was you. So I, I, think, I think that's a compliment to be known by your laugh. It is. It's wonderful. So, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Yeah. Some of us are farther down the road. Ian, I think, is into Sunday. Yeah. Already. It's tomorrow for some of our friends. Yeah, it is. So. Yeah. Thank you Thank so, you. so much. Thank you, Jen. Have a good day. Yes, Jen, just close out your browser window and then you'll be fine. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> we'll talk again. Good night. All right. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> bye bye.